Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video for you today on a sheath that I just built for this hatchet. And uh, I'm actually not sure what the brand is, so I'm gonna ask my good buddy, BJ Hill, who sent this to me. Uh, BJ, is, uh, BJ is the man, you guys gotta check him out. He does exceptional sharpening, he does acid wash jobs, um, he does custom handle scales, he's done a couple for me. Uh, you guys saw some that I put on a, uh, uh, K bar TDI two inch not too long ago. Really, really impressive stuff. The guy is super great uh, and he's just a super good dude. So go check him out. Uh, I'm going to put his new YouTube channel in the description box below. You can get in touch with him through there. Um, it is Hilltop Knives and Gear. Um, he's got a pretty new channel, but he's already killing it, man. He's got a ton of su uh, subscribers. So go over there, subscribe to him if you haven't done so already. And uh, check out, he's got some great content. He does tons of like torture tests on knives and, uh, you know, showing a lot about the hardness of each blade and steel and all that good stuff. Um, so I think he's going to end up doing, you know, he's answering some questions that not a lot of people are, are uh, really addressing, like the quality of the heat treat, essentially, is what you're going to find out with, uh, with a lot of these hardness things. Um, so anyway, BJ is way more into that stuff than I am. He knows a lot more about it. He's a great dude. So go check his channel out. He's got some really, really entertaining content and, uh, and I'm just really proud of him. So anyway, he sent this to me. He asked me if I could build him a sheath with mollies on it. That was the only thing he said. He wants mollies on it and the rest was up to me. Um, so I decided that I wanted to try some material that I hadn't used before. Um, and, uh, I had this stuff kicking around for... I don't know, almost a year now maybe and it's really really nice <clears throat> so this is actually cowhide but it's been embossed to look like alligator and uh, when I bought it on eBay the seller had had uh, listed it as alligator hide um, so when it came I was very quickly able to identify that it was cowhide not alligator hide however it was a, a pretty forgivable mistake because for somebody who, who doesn't necessarily know the leather world very well uh, and hasn't had exposure to both. Um, you know, this is a very convincing fake. Um, the big difference between this and the crappy stuff is that this is actually, it, like, whatever they did in the embossing process, or, or I don't know how this is made exactly, but I know they embossed the pattern, and then they gave it some kind of waxy enamel. It feels almost like alligator hide, too. So, you know, yeah, as far as fakes go, this is an incredible imitation but it is cowhide not gator um, that said it is tougher than regular cowhide so it's full grain leather I can tell that much about it but in addition to being the highest quality leather and that's the only stuff I use guys on, on any of the stuff that you see with mine it's always going to be full grain leather I don't use top grain I don't use genuine I don't use scrap um, so you're going to get full grain leather but in addition to that <clears throat> whatever this enamel is over the top makes the surface a lot harder so it doesn't take the same kind of scratching and imprints and, and uh, you know marking up that regular leather would so I would highly recommend this stuff uh, I'm gonna see if I can get my hands on some more of it I don't know where it came from I think this was just something the seller found in his attic or inherited from you know in his parents attic or something like that uh, I know that he's not actually a leather goods dealer so uh, I got to do some research and see if I can find it. If you guys have any lines on it, happen to know anything about this, definitely point me in the right direction because I want to buy some more. I still have about two square feet of this, which is plenty to make some other projects. So if any of you guys are interested, let me know. Uh, but this stuff is awesome, awesome, awesome. Really good to work with and super durable. So uh, very happy with it. But full disclosure, cowhide, not leather. Um, the real tell was that the pattern repeated three times across the face of it at perfect intervals and it was very obvious that it was an identical pattern so unless there was some kind of uh, Siamese triplet crocodile swimming around or alligator or whatever uh, I, I don't think there was any way that this was not cowhide so that all said um, I'm going to show you this sheet this thing is sick I am very very proud of this one um, it's not often that I'm like truly uh, braggadocious or whatever about a project, but I think I can be with this one just because, you know, it, in all, in all honesty, it's partly just because the leather was so good to work with. Um, uh, but man, 
this thing just everything went right with it which made me really happy and uh, I put a lot of love into it so I was very pleased with the results and uh, hopefully you guys will like this too but I wanted to share it with you just because uh, it's something pretty off the beating path I don't see anybody else this is the first time I've done any kind of wrap on the Kydex for a hatchet sheath I haven't seen anybody else do it and then uh, obviously this material is very unique in and of itself so um, I'd love your thoughts on all this stuff but I'm really, really pleased with it. So, what do we have? We got Molly's on it here, and then the attachment up top is a diamond hone, a 600 grit diamond hone from a company called Sharpall. And I'd never actually heard of them until, sorry, I put it upside down. Uh, I'd never heard of them until BJ sent me a link three days ago and asked me if I could put this on his sheath. So I bought the attachment through Amazon, and. Um, and then I added it. Um, this thing is really cool because it's got this perfect little cylinder here. But if you unscrew it, you get a tapered rod here. And both sides of the tail cap are symmetrical in every way in the threading. So you can go Darth Maul on this thing and have it be a double, uh, dual purpose here. So you can, uh, you can really do a lot with this. I'm very impressed by it. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I like my uh, attachments to be on a sheath but personally I think this goes very nicely with uh, with this type of uh, with this type of sheath sorry I'm a little bit scatterbrained as you can obviously tell but this is it's pretty nice it's a very smooth texture too and uh, it's very consistent very good machining on this which means that when it translates to uh, you know putting kydex around it I can make the kydex very tight so that the retention is exceptional but it's also still going to be very smooth operation I'm shaking that pretty hard three pretty good shakes and that still only came out like a third of the way so I'm really impressed with this it doesn't take a lot of force to draw it but at the same time the weight of it is very well supported by the retention on the loop itself so you can see that I've done the hide on the loop as well, which is very difficult to do sometimes. Um, ugh, that is not, that's not pretty light. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to give you a better look at it. Um, so yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do to, to get Kydex on, like especially the crease right there, you know, where this comes down and then planes back out. Um, but I think it came out nice. It just happened size wise to line up almost perfectly centered uh that was i mean that's that's something that is not necessarily going to happen but worked out really nicely with this particular thing um and then the the biggest benefit to bj asking this to be added to the sheath is that it created a natural spacer uh, to elevate and close that gap between the molly lock and the eyelets on the spine so what i'm talking about here before before I added this, I had to have almost a full inch of rubber spacers piled up. So I, I used a half inch and a three-eighths inch, just two of them. Um, and that was what caused that gap to be bridged. But with so much just spacer in between there, rubber spacer, it had a little bit of wiggle on the molly locks. Now what it is is the, uh, the attachment here. Obviously, this is Kydex wrapped in this gator skin embossed cowhide. And then just a quarter inch spacer. Uh, between the attachment holder and the back of the molly so now they're extremely stable they're rugged really fixed in place no movement no play so i think that really uh actually benefited the sheath in a big way <clears throat> i also originally was going to uh, put a paracord handle across from the tip to the tip these two eyelets here um, but it occurred to me when i finished mounting this that this gives you a really good handle to grip onto. So as far as the reason for it is, you know, you don't have the same kind of thumb ramp capability with a hatchet sheath as you do with a knife sheath. Um, so with this guy, it's nice to have, with hatchet sheaths in general, you gotta have something that you can use as a handle uh, to give you some torque to remove it. Um, when it's fixed to your belt or pack, you might be able to get away with, you know, I can use my thumb here and just push it and then, yeah, I mean, I could definitely do this one-handed. It's actually a very, very smooth draw, especially for a hatchet sheath. But, um, but yeah, it just came out really nicely. So with a handle, it's a lot easier, and all you have to do is spread this here, 
and use the handle to kind of peel it off like that. So putting it back in, go straight through. You can come up from an angle from the bottom. The big thing though is that you want to use the blade edge of the hatchet to cut through this small gap on the back corner, you know, where it's formed here. Um, and the reason is because where it does come together so close, if you try to go in like this, it's too wide to go onto the hatchet. So you're actually going to be using the spine of your hatchet itself to scrape some of the edge of the kydex. You can do it, but I think over time it's going to wear off some of that kydex and just, you know, it's not going to damage it any, but it is going to take away a little bit from the aesthetics if you're up close and looking at it. And uh, there's no reason to get leather on a sheath if not for aesthetic reasons. I mean, well, there are reasons, but that's like the number one reason for sure. It's not as functional as it is eye-pleasing. So um, I think you should try to maintain these things as well as you can. Uh, so anyway, if you go in through here, you're going to just do a tapered effect on it and you're never going to put undue stress on those inner sides of the kydex. But yeah, so I just go straight in from the back, slides right on. This thing works really, really nicely. Gives you a pretty secure hold on it. Um, if you're really worried about uh, the potential of your hatchet ever, you know, popping loose while it's on on your pack or something like that, or if you decide to use the uh, the same eyelets or drill holes or whatever, the mounting that's that's currently being used for these two Molly locks is actually identical to the four corners of a tech lock. So this is fully compatible to switch out between Molly's or a tech lock. Um, so if you did decide to switch to a tech lock or you have this mounted to your pack, uh, it is definitely conceivable that a good whack on the butt of the handle, here, let me show you. I guess I can't, I can't brace it enough up here to fight myself on it, but a good whack could potentially uh, cause it to, you know, unseat a little bit like this um, or pop loose, who knows, uh, if it hit just right. So uh, if you're really worried about that, then what I would recommend is just taking a piece of paracord and making a little slip knot that goes through this eyelet and comes down around, ties around the butt here. So that is an option, but I don't think you have anything to worry about. I would carry it just as is. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, I, uh, like I said, I'm very, very pleased with this stuff. The only thing I couldn't do to this that I wanted to was add a logo because this stuff is so tough that uh, I couldn't just stamp a logo in like normal. You can see I've tried here and with just the right angle, you can kind of make out the logo, but, uh, for the most part, it just looks like a mistake. It looks like damage. I think maybe because the cluster of scales is just too tight. Um, so this doesn't break up the pattern enough the way it would against a uh, smooth kydex surface or something like that. And then even trying like super hot stamp to brand it, I couldn't get it any cleaner than that. And to me, that just doesn't look good. So I decided um, I would just leave it as is and uh, BJ is pretty much a walking billboard for me, <laughs> so I'm not too worried about people not knowing who this is from. Plus, I got this video out and all that good stuff. So, in any event, I'm really pleased with how this came out. I hope you guys like it too. If you do, uh, definitely comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of this cowhide versus real gator skin um, versus regular leather, actually, for that matter. You know, this versus non-embossed cowhide. I think this is really exceptional stuff that I hope to use more and more if I can get my hands on more of it. And um, yeah, that's what I got. So if you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, I ask you to subscribe to it. Definitely comment down below. Give me your thoughts on not only the sheath, but the hatchet itself. And uh, the, the brand of the hatchet will be in the title of the video. I'll ask BJ here right after I finish recording. Apologize for not having that already. And then uh, this sharp all, I think this is a really great option for a sharpener. Um, probably wouldn't go with a lot of smaller knives out there. For something like that, I would say just go with like a regular AccuSharp or um, Lansky makes a really small one too. But man, for this something bigger, that is a really cool option. I'm really impressed with it. Um, so, all right guys, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you for sticking around for 15 minutes of me rambling. And uh, I hope you tune in for the next one. God bless.